Hi, welcome back to the Robotics University course, lecture number 8. From here, we will start second part of this course. In this lecture, we will study about coordinate frames and mapping. So, let's start with coordinate frames. A coordinate frame is a set of three orthogonal right-handed axes x, y, z called principal axis. We know from our school that any point P in 3D space can be defined with respect to this coordinate frame by vector OP as shown in the figure where O is the origin. It can also be represented as this equation where P is the point in space 1 represents the frame number and 1px, 1py, 1pz are the x, y and z coordinates respectively with respect to the frame 1. This equation can also be represented in matrix form as shown here. This matrix form is very important in robotics. Now let's move on to next topic that is mapping. Mapping refers to changing the description of a point in space from one frame to the another. Suppose we have a point P in the space that is defined with respect to a frame 1. Now we have another coordinate frame named as frame 2 and we want to find the coordinate of our point P with respect to this frame 2. This description of the point from frame 1 to the frame 2 is achieved by mapping. So mapping refers to changing the description of a point in space from frame 1 to another frame. The second frame has three possibilities in relation to the first frame. The first one is second frame is rotated with respect to the first frame keeping the origin of both the frames same. In robotics this is referred to as changing the orientation. The second possibility is second frame is moved away from the first that is translation keeping the axis of both the frames parallel. The third possibility is the second frame is rotated with respect to the first frame as well as moved away from it that is second frame is translated and its orientation is also changed. So these are the three possibilities that we will be studying one by one in this lecture. A point to be noted over here is mapping changes the description of the point but not the point itself that is the point remains the same only its reference frame is changed. Okay, so let's study mapping between rotated frames. Consider two frames, frame 1 with axis x, y and z as shown by the red lines and frame 2 with axis u, v and w as shown by the green lines in the figure. These both frames have the common origin. A point P can be defined with respect to the frame 1 and frame 2 as 1P is equal to 1PX X cap plus 1PY Y cap plus 1PZ Z cap and with respect to the frame 2 as 2P is equal to 2P U U cap plus 2P V V cap plus 2P W W cap. Now suppose we have description of P in frame 2 and we want to find the description of P in frame 1. This is achieved by projecting this vector 2P on the coordinates of frame 1. This is achieved by taking dot product of 2P with unit vectors of frame 1. So 1px is given by x cap dot 2p that is equal to x cap dot 2p u u cap plus x cap dot 2p v v cap plus x cap dot 2p w w cap. Similarly 1py is equal to y cap dot 2p and 1pz is equal to z cap dot 2p. This can be written in the matrix form as shown here. So 1p can be obtained from 2p by multiplying the 2p in the as shown order. Order is very important here. So multiplying by multiplying 2p by a matrix known as the rotation matrix. This matrix is very important and will be used later in this lecture. Now the next topic is mapping between the translated frames. Consider two frames such that axis of both the frames are parallel to one another. Look at this figure over here. Axis of frame 1 that is x, y, z are parallel to the axis of frame 2 that is u, v and w. 
P with respect to the frame 1 can be represented as O1 P vector. P with respect to the frame 2 can be represented as O2 P vector. The two vectors are related as O1 P vector is equal to O2 P vector plus O1 O2 vector. This can be represented as 1 P is equal to 2 P plus 1 D2. Where this 1 D2 is the translation of the origin of frame 2 that is the frame UVW with respect to the frame 1 that is frame XYZ. Okay, in this equation splitting 2P and 1D2, 1P can be written as 2PU plus DX X cap plus 2PV plus DY Y cap plus 2PW plus DZ Z cap. 1P can also be written as 1PX X cap plus 1PY Y cap plus 1PZ Z cap. So comparing these two equations we get the value of 1PX, 1PY and 1PZ. Okay, remember this equation. It will be used again and again in the following lectures. Now, a powerful representation of translation is in a 4D space of homogeneous coordinates. In these coordinates, point P in space with respect to the frame 1 is denoted as shown over here. Here, a fourth component sigma is introduced. It is a non-zero positive scale factor. In robotics, normally a scale factor of 1 is used, that is, sigma is equal to 1. So, using homogeneous coordinates, this equation can be written as shown. When you multiply these two matrices, you will get this equation only. So, in translation, a frame 1p can be obtained from frame 2p by multiplying as shown order with a matrix called translation matrix. The order is very important here. Now, the next topic is the combination of rotated and translated frame. So, in the rotated and translated frames, 1P can be written as 1R2, 2P plus 1D2, as this is the combination of rotated and translated frame. This can also be written as 1P is equal to 1T2, 2P, where 1T2 is the homogeneous transformation matrix that is obtained by the combination of the rotation and translation matrix. Now, this 1T2 can be represented as shown over here. It is a combination of rotation matrix, translation matrix, scale factor and perspective transformation matrix. Rotation matrix we have already studied, translation vector we have already studied, scale factor we know in robotics we will use the sigma is equal to 1 and perspective transformation matrix is the fourth part of this matrix and is set to zero where no perspective views are involved. Okay, so you can ignore this and set all the elements of this perspective transformation matrix is equal to zero. Okay, now the last topic is fundamental rotation matrix where we will study the rotation about x axis, y axis and z axis. Remember, the rotation matrix is given by x cap dot u cap, x cap dot v cap and x cap dot w cap as the first row. Similarly, we have second row and third row. Now, when two frames are rotated by angle theta about z axis, then x cap dot u cap is equal to cos theta. And similarly, we can find the other dot products. The rotation matrix in such case is given by cos theta minus sin theta 0 sin theta cos theta 0 and 0 0 1. This is when the rotation is about the z axis. Similarly, the rotation matrices for the rotation about x axis and y axis are shown over here. Now, when there are sequence of rotations, for example, rotation about x axis followed by the rotation about y axis. This is given by Ry multiplied by Rx as shown here. This cannot be Rx into Ry. It will generate a different result. So here the order is very important. So write first rotation on the very right hand side and last rotation onto the left side. Okay, so that was all for this lecture. See you in the next lecture.